Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters, when you are in a position of authority and you abuse it by harming someone, hurting someone, stealing property, by usurping whatever it may be, depending on the level, depending on the level of authority you have, Allah gives you a chance. Allah gives you a chance to make it right. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it right himself. The difficulty is, if we look at the globe today, we know there is a crisis in the Middle East right now. If anyone feels that they are in a position of power, they should remember that the all-powerful is far higher and greater than them. So if they are to use that power in the wrong way, heavy-handedness, in this particular case, the killing, of innocent people, the fighting, the usurping of land, whatever it may be, they will never get away with it. Maybe temporarily they might be excited to think that we're winning. But remember, Allah Almighty, He is the owner of entire creation. And that is why ultimately on the Day of Judgment, the announcement is made, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَّارِ الْيَوْمَ تُجْزَى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ لَا ظُلْمَ الْيَوْمِ Beautiful description of the Day of Judgment. And the Day of Judgment is necessary simply because Allah says that He has kept a day aside to ensure that those who were wronged get their justice because people on earth may not get their justice you might not see in your life the justice look at those who are being killed right now the children the women the men who may not be involved at all the journalists the peacekeepers no matter who they may they are hundreds of these and thousands of them are being killed their buildings, their dwellings destroyed, the infrastructure literally brought down to rubble and the world seems to be unable to do anything. Doesn't it remind you of the Pharaoh? And what happened to the Pharaoh? Did the Lord of the worlds not drown him with H2O? Two hydrogen, one oxygen. The man couldn't even bear that. He was drowned, the Pharaoh. And there was a time when he thought he was unstoppable. There was a time when he did what he did. People say the children, well, they were children. Allah says he slaughtered their children. And people obviously knew this is unfair. Why does Allah allow this? It's not a matter of Allah allowing it. It's the matter of a criminal perpetrating it. Those innocent children are perhaps in paradise in the most beautiful condition. But this man lived an entire life of fear, no matter how powerful he was. The Pharaoh was always scared. A sign that he was scared from his very inauguration when he came into power, right up to the end, he was fighting. If you look, for example, in 1948, the land of the Palestinians was stolen. That's exactly what happened. In 1948, the claim was laid and people decided if you are interested to look at the true history, you will find it. They used the term Israel to refer to a place when in history it only ever referred to a people. Israel is Jacob, may peace be upon him. The children of Israel or the Israelites are the children of Jacob. It never referred to a place. The place, the Canaanites who were there, Palestine, Palestine, people know this. So what they did is they came in, they killed, they took the land. And in fact, initially before 1948, as some of them came, they were welcomed by the poor Palestinians who saw these are our cousins. They are being persecuted wherever they were. And let us give them a little bit of perhaps room to live. And we will try and live with each other. What happened? You need to know that as they came in a little while later, they made their true intentions clear that we are here 
because we believe that this is our promised land. You tell me, we are Muslims sitting in this masjid. Do you not believe in Moses? Do you not believe in Jesus? Do you not believe in Muhammad? May peace be upon them all. Is the fact that you are a follower of a faith an automatic permission for you to claim land wherever that person whom you follow was? Can you today go to Bethlehem or the Christians go to Bethlehem or Nazareth and say that Jesus was here so this is ours? They can't, they wouldn't. Because you know, you can't claim that because the, I am following this religion, so this land is mine where my priest was, my uh, guru was, my prophet was, and so on. You can't say that. It's common sense. People came in from Europe, they took the land. That's the reason why today it is prohibited, and you can Google this, to do a DNA test in Israel. Totally forbidden. Wrong. It's illegal. It's a crime. You'll be jailed. If you do a DNA test in Israel, why? Because they know the truth will come out. You come from Poland, you come from Ukraine, you came from Europe, you came from everywhere else. And they were the original Middle Eastern Jews who lived together with the Muslims and the Christians for centuries, for centuries. So what happened to a lot of the Jews who were the Middle Eastern Jews? How come the Palestinians were all or predominantly Muslim? Did you know that there are hundreds of thousands of Palestinian Christians? Did you know that? Across the globe, they are scattered. They suffered as well. In fact, they suffered perhaps more than the Muslims. Do you know that their churches were bombed? Do you know that they feel more unsafe than the Muslims? Did you ever know that? These are Palestinians. So it's not something to say that this land was only taken from the Muslims. No, it was taken from the Palestinians. And what was the excuse used? They told their people that, you know what? You all belong to a certain faith. So by you belonging to that faith, you are now entitled to the land of your forefathers. And who were your forefathers? These were they. I ask you a question again for a second time in this talk. As Muslims, do you think it would be sensible for me to come up and say, you follow Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was in Medina. Therefore, you have a right to go and claim the land there. Do you? You can go, you can visit, you can come back, you can say, wow, he was there, I saw, and so on. You can't claim the land just because you're a follower. Where are you from? So those who were there, the Middle Eastern Jews, most of them, according to the books of history, converted. They converted to what? To Christianity and then to Islam. Who was Jesus sent to? Was he not sent to the Jews? Was he not Jewish? That's what we believe. He was part of Banu Israel, the children of Jacob. Ishaq is the son of whom? Ibrahim. And after Ishaq, you had Yaqub. When Allah says in the Quran, وَمِنْ وَرَاءِ إِسْحَاقَ Yaqub. So we had Yaqub. And Yaqub was known as Israel or Israel. That was the man's name. So today that land, they call it Jacob, basically, which is Israel. Jacob. Why don't we use the word Jacob? So the people of Jacob, that's what it is. It's not the land. This is something we need to know because people claim and so many of our Jewish brothers. And when I say brothers, I'm talking of the non-Zionist. Remember something. A Zionist is a person who believes that this land of Israel is ours. We will claim it and steal it from the Palestinians. And we need to create a state for ourselves there. That person is called a Zionist. Do you know there are hundreds of thousands of Jews, if not, perhaps maybe it goes into the millions, who are not Zionists. They believe we are not supposed to have that land. It's not ours. We know the truth. Do you know? There are so many. Now, because of social media, we have found out, we have seen them. We have watched them say things that, listen, I am Jewish and I believe that we are not supposed to be having that land. It belongs to the Palestinians. And we come from either Europe or America or anywhere in the world. But ever since they were young, they go to their schools, like what we would call a madrasa. And they were never taught the truth. They were always taught, your land is Israel. You need to go back. You need to go back. They were taught that the only place that a Jew would be safe is Israel. When the truth is actually the opposite. The only place that a Jew is unsafe is Israel. That's the truth. They need to think about this. It's a fact. From 1948 to this minute, there is no peace there. 
So how can you lie to your people that the only place where the Jews will be safe is Israel when the truth is exactly the opposite, the only place that they will be unsafe is Israel. There are Jews amongst us in this community, perhaps in this city of Bulueo, as well as in Harare, they are very safe. They are very safe. There are Jews in America and Britain and everywhere else across the globe. In fact, in the Middle East, there are Jews in Iran, there are Jews in Algeria, there are Jews in so many other countries. Did you know that? Are you aware of that? There is a healthy Jewish communities in many of these countries. They are so safe. So the only place they are not safe is a place they stole. They stole the land. They went in just like the colonizers did. If you know the colonization of Zimbabwe and how it happened, exactly the same way they went to colonize this place. And they used religion in order to fool the people. And that's what they did everywhere. You, if you were to look at our country here, and I'm not going to go into the history, you need to study and study hard. What's the meaning of studying hard? Don't just believe the first things you read. Go back, go deeper, go deeper, check, go see what's happening, learn. You will, re you will realize that these struggles are all the same. That's why Nelson Mandela said that South Africa will never be truly free unless and until Palestine is free. Because it's the same thing. You came in, you took the land from the Arabs and that's why you stick out like a sore thumb in the Middle Eastern region and you, people just have to look at you and know you're not from this region. You look at me today, I can never ever lie to you that my ethnicity is Zimbabwean. No, I'm Zimbabwean by birth, I'm Zimbabwean by nationality, but the fact that you look at my face, you can automatically know that I come from somewhere else. Do you not agree? No one can deny that. I'm not saying I'm not a national, I'm a national, I'm loyal to my nation, by all means. But truth be told, are you originally from here and your forefathers as you claim? Be honest and say, no, I, we came in two generations back or three generations back. But for them, they say, let's go back 3,000 years. Well, I have a good idea. Why 3,000? Let's go back to the beginning of everything. Where was Adam from? On earth. Can't we all go anywhere on earth and say, my great, greatest grandfather had this land move off its mind. The claim you have is the claim I have. If I could go back 3,000 years, I can go back 30,000 years. What's the difference? In fact, it's healthier and stronger and more just to go back 30,000 years. You want to go back to David, I want to go back to Abraham. Abraham had two children, Ismail and Isaac. They were brothers. These are cousins fighting for land. And in fact, they are not really cousins because many of them are actually Caucasian from somewhere else altogether. But let's, for argument's sake, let's say that they are. Don't we all go back to Abraham? So if you claim this, I claim this because he was also my father, wasn't he? Amazing. But unfortunately, people get angry and upset and emotional and they don't want to sit calm and explain to people, listen, there's a history here. We are people of peace. We've promoted peace from the time we were born and our fathers promoted it before we were born. And we will live by peace and keep on promoting it. But justice is a part of peace. If you want to know why people are fighting you from the beginning to today, there has to be a reason. They are not stupid. They are not stupid. They are not silly. Why from 1948, these people are living in a constant state of fear, just like the Pharaoh did, yet they are so powerful. They were propped up by other superpowers, propped up. And one of the reasons is because you did wrong, you'll never be at peace. That's what it is. The Pharaoh. He had to kill little babies because one fortune teller told him that there's going to be a baby born from these people who's going to take you off your throne. He got so worried, his sleep was what we would say haram, which means he had no more sleep, no proper sleep. He wanted to kill little kids, small kids. And what was his argument? He said, when they grow older, they're going to bother me. Today, I've heard with my own ears, those same people do it to others, and they use the same excuse, we're going to kill their children and their women because when they grow older, they're going to trouble us. How can you say that? Don't we all believe in the innocence of children? Maybe when those children grew up, they would solve the problem and they would bring about peace because we were unable to bring it simply because one party wants peace and the other one claims they want peace, but they don't really want peace. May Allah grant us ease.
When I sit and I look at the land reform here in Zimbabwe and I take a look at what happened over the years and people actually said at that particular time, no, you know what, there's a lot of productivity on the land. How could you take it back and give it to the original people? Islam looked at it one way. Whether there's productivity or no productivity, I don't care. It doesn't belong to you, please give it back. That's all. The only way the problem was solved was that the land was given back. Today, I read an article that said there was an expert that came from the UK who said the land reform was the biggest success. I'm talking of Zimbabwe. Why? We started producing tobacco more than the last 65 years. We started producing so much more. People might argue, well, where's the money going? I'm not worried where the money is going. Did they steal from you? That's the question. If they're, if they're filling their pockets, let them fill their pockets. The fact is, the land went to where it was. By someone else stealing, does it justify that you stole, that you can steal? It doesn't. May Allah grant us ease. So in Palestine, the same thing. The land, you cannot just drive out people and tell them this is our land. The, the people who are there, I'd like to think most of them don't even know what happened. Because when the media is in your hands, when politics is in your hands, when everything is in your hands, the economies are in your hands, you control the narrative. That's the reason why you find the urge to block. If I were to post this video, for example, and I will, it may be blocked. What did I say? Is it not such a peaceful speech? But when people don't want you to know the truth, what do they do? They block it. So if you find the urge to block something, probably you're guilty. You're guilty. You see, if someone, for example, said something wrong, I can say something right to correct the wrong and leave it at that because people who want to say the wrong will always know what it was already dealt with at some stage, right? But if I delete that whole thing or I delete what is right or what is wrong, the narrative is not known by anyone. Today, if someone wants to study, the material they find on the matter is very little. When I studied the history of Zimbabwe, for example, I had a lot of questions of how Christianity came into this country, how the Muslims were in the past, who they were, where they were, what impact did they have on the nation. And can I tell you what? When colonizers come in, the first thing they do, they delete history so that you don't know what happened. They did it in Iraq. They did it in Libya. They did it in Afghanistan and so many other places. But in Afghanistan, they didn't manage to a degree because they didn't win fully. But they've done it in so many places. Delete the history so that nobody knows what happened. France did it in most of North Africa. They don't even know the history. And now that it's coming up because people are bringing it from the closet and saying, you know what? Actually, there were Muslims here. And actually, there were so many of them. And there were tribes of Muslims, whether it's the Varemba or whatever else it may be. No one wants to hear this because that's not the narrative you are supposed to hear. When I visited Great Zimbabwe, I saw artifacts in Arabic script. And I remembered, I, I studied the buildings and I saw how this is perhaps a minara, this is facing the Qibla, this is perhaps a mimbar, like the one you see here, they call it the Daga platform and so on. And I questioned one of the guys who was there, historian, saying, do you know what, what's this all about? And he told me something. And at the end of it, I told him, you know what, I believe actually there were Muslims here. He said, I know, but we're not allowed to say that. Wallahi, he told me that. He said, we're not allowed to say that. I said, look, this is Arabic. He said, I know, you can't take a picture of it. You're not allowed to take a photo. I said, but why? For what? And you see what I'm saying? Someone came somewhere down the line and said, don't tell them there were Muslims here. Don't. Because if that's the case, they are truly liberated. When you're a Muslim, why are you liberated? Because you have a direct connection between you and your maker and myself as a mufti. Your forgiveness is in no way connected to me forgiving you or not. Not at all. You don't ever come to me and confess your sin because guess what? Who knows? You might be a saint compared to me. Who knows? That's Islam. It liberates you. It presents for you the direct relationship between you and your maker. Yes, I may go to people, please pray for me. I may go to people, please, uh, you know, can you help me with so and so. That's fine. But my forgiveness is in the hands of Allah. So my brothers and sisters, when people want to delete history, 
guys like you and I need to work harder to discover it. Today, with the advent of social media, we are very fortunate. I have learned from TikTok more than I've learned from anywhere else on social media within the last few weeks about Palestine and about Israel and the Jewish people who disagree with the state of Israel and the people within Israel who are saying, we don't want to fight. We really don't want to go to war. We disagree with the sporadic killing of these of these children and women and so on. And we need to make peace and we need to have a solution, be it a two state solution or whatever it's going to be. There are Jewish people who really would like to see peace. And I've come across so many of them. There are Christians for the first time realizing that they hate the Christians more than they hate the Muslims, but it's a matter of time. Because at the end of the day, they want to rule the world. That's what it is. So if you let it pass today, tomorrow it's coming to you. What do you think is going to happen? I want to end on this perhaps. Say everyone in Gaza is killed, for example. May Allah protect them and grant them true victory. I mean, say everyone was killed. Now what? You think you're going to stop there? There are people who are going to fight you tooth and nail until their very existence from all across the globe for a long, long time because their families, their relatives are all over the world. I know Palestinians and people whose parents come from Gaza in America, in Britain, in Australia, in, in New Zealand, in Zimbabwe, in South Africa, wherever it is. So what do you think they're going to do? You've just created enmity against millions of people for generations to come across the world. Is that a solution? Do you really want peace? Well, well if you wanted peace, you would stop killing. First thing, ceasefire. Let's talk. We need peace. But when you don't want peace, you want to steal more land. And you want to con your people, the Bible promised it to us. The Bible. The Bible promised this to you. I could use the Bible to prove to you that that whole area is mine and my father's, if that's the case. Another thing is, where on earth did it ever say you can use a scripture for that to happen? Where were these people? Where were they? So they'll come and say, no, the Ottomans did this and did that. I promise you they converted to Christianity. How many Christians are there? Are the Christians not originally Jewish? In the sense that, was Jesus not a Jew? Did he, was he not sent to Banu Israel? He was. So those who became Christians and are Christians, don't they have a greater right over that land if that was the case? Similarly, who are the Muslims? The Muslims are the ones who converted from there. You see, the Jewish people shifted to Medina because they heard that a prophet is going to come in on a land that is a desert land with palm trees. They found Medina or known as Yathrib at the time. They came there and guess what? They decided to live around there, yet they were not from there. So when people say, oh, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did this and Umar ibn al-Khattab did that. And so, no, 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 no. They, were, they know they were not from there. They know it. But the bulk of them at some point, they changed faith. And they became Muslims at some point. So may Allah Almighty grant us success and ease. Wallahi, this topic is a current topic. That's why I've taken a little bit more time. And I've tried to explain it very simply without getting emotional to say that we stand for our brothers and sisters in Palestine whose land was stolen in 1948 and we know the history and we want to tell people what the history is and if you don't believe me don't go and search and research you will find the non-muslims and the politicians of the time saying look we were looking for a land to put these people we thought of uganda wallahi it's true don't laugh don't laugh we thought of entebbe and we said you know what it's a very rich place it has a lot of resources but then what excuse can we use to put our people there Ah, there's no excuse because we can't say Jesus was there, Moses was there. Rather, let's just take them to another very wealthy place, the Middle East. They, they, they are extremely wealthy and the wealth was discovered by the colonialists before us. Do you know in Zimbabwe, I'm going to drop another one for you. You see the trees planted around. You sit and you think, oh, this tree, this tree, who planted these trees? Do you know that when the colonialists came and really scouted and saw what was happening, 
When they knew there's gold reserves here, they planted a certain type of a tree around that area. When they knew there's lithium here, they planted a certain type of a tree around that area. When they knew there's cobalt here, they planted a certain type of tree around the area. When they knew there's this there, they planted a certain type of tree around the area. No one knew it besides them. Today, people have discovered it. It's a fact, I'm not lying to you. Go and ask those in mining. They'll tell you, look, you only need to go look for those trees by that land. You know what's they're gonna be inside. Imagine. Because they knew 150 years ago, they didn't have the means to extract it at the time. Same applies in the Middle East. Do you think oil was only discovered the day the Arabs thought it was discovered? They knew well in advance, this place is going to be extremely wealthy. We need someone in there who's going to maintain because these people become a superpower. Keep the war going forever and ever. Keep on claiming, keep them fighting and con your people that the only peaceful place on earth is going to be for you here. Whereas it's the opposite. Like I said at the beginning of the talk, it's the opposite. So what they did, they went to the people, they said no longer Uganda, change of plan. We're going to Palestine. The British actually helped them to do it and achieve it. They sent their people, in fact they had colonized the place. Come, take this. Colonized. That could have been Zimbabwe or anywhere else. As it is, Zimbabwe is one of the richest places on earth, according to what we know as Zimbabweans. The only country where we were multi-trillionaires, all of us, including my great-grandchildren who are to come. May Allah grant us ease. I'm talking of the dollar that we used to have a long time back. You know, so if they came there, whose land was it? They were people. These were very good, hospitable people. Go and ask the Jews of that time, how were you living? They'll say, we were living in so much peace, harmony. There were Jews, there were Christians, there were Muslims. We used to pray and we used to visit the same shrines because we we're all connected in that particular way. And guess what happened? Come 1948, the peace went up to today. I say, my brothers and sisters, we should raise our hands in prayer to Allah. We are promoters of true peace and peace comes about with justice. And I would never ever encourage anyone to be violent in any way, shape or form. But what we should do, conscientize people, let them know what happened. I see the churches around us at times, they get very excited, oh, Israel this and Israel that. They don't know the history because they don't even know their own history. That's the reason. They don't even know what happened in Zimbabwe. And if we were to tell them, they would become very upset. And they would, they would start getting so emotional about it because they don't want to know the truth. Are you prepared to listen to the other side of the narrative without getting emotional? If yes, I can offer it to you. May Allah grant us ease. May Allah grant us success. End of the day, anyone who has taken anything from anyone, please give it back. Why? Because a day will come, you are laughing today, but a day will come when Allah will ensure that you have to pay for that. And I feel sorry for you on that particular day because as powerful as you may think you are today, you are going to be totally helpless. Same applies to everyone, including myself. If you have wronged someone, make peace today. It's better for you than to leave it for tomorrow. Look, my brother, I wronged you. Forgive me. We are all going to go back to Allah. I just need to live properly. Because when Allah's whip is cracked, Wallahi, there's no sound. It will destroy in a way that you never imagined this would happen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us peace and goodness. You can see that I want to go on and on and on, but I need to actually pause. Perhaps we all have other commitments and may Allah Almighty grant true victory to the Palestinians and grant them a return to their original lands. Amin.